important to get control over my emotions, my negative thoughts, and as you would expect it, um, and told us the anxiety. Yeah, so we are talking about a part that mental training creates resilience because everything that we want to control is trainable. I can train my outward appearance, I can train <coughs> excuse me, my initial emotional reaction. Yeah, so of course in nature we have stronger and more insecure people, but even the most insecure person can have a fantastic outward appearance and presentation because we can learn it. <coughs> Why? Because mental strength is an ability. It is an ability to create, to develop, to control, to show your best performance, then when it counts, not the day before or the day after. Of course, the green line with resilience, <coughs> with mental strength, we still have good and bad days. We still have the waves in our performance. There is still inconsistency. But it's much more stable than we all need to play and mental strength. Very difficult part here is that we need to understand that emotions can be trained like a muscle. So if I want to have a six pack, I go to my personal coach, and he was probably killing me for that six weeks. But with discipline and a strong plan and tailored to my own needs, I can develop my six pack. So the same thing here, if I want to be resilient, if I want to be happy, if I want to be mentally strong, I have to have an individual plan tailored to my own needs, limitations, wishes, and I can develop it. It's, it I can train my emotions, I can train the way I think, the way I talk to myself, like a muscle. You just need the program. But if you don't have the right training, if you don't have the tools, you don't have the chance. You cannot come up here and just say, oh, I'm going to be strong. Okay, well, that is the goal. How are you going to do it? And this is what's really important to me. I want to give you ideas how to handle these situations with tools that are very simple but strong. I'm having an example of how I learn in the wrong way. So, Tish is the German word for table, and I mislearned this vocabulary. And now, I'm studying with Nino, my English vocabulary, and he's doing my mathematics part, so I made two piles of vocabulary cards. I made this mistake. Nino is studying the wrong way. Okay, my fault. So we go, and we go to the exam, and I'm going in there, and then I ask several questions, and then the teachers are like, okay, fantastic. One last question. What does the German word table mean in English? And I say, hotel. And they're like, uh, no. So, oh, okay, is it, is, it, is it yellow? No. Is it castle? No, no, hang on, Tina, wait. Stop, you pass, but please check this word, okay? You have to relearn. Okay. So I'm going out, and I see Nino, he's going to be the next one. Yes, Nino, you have got to be careful. I made a mistake. Tish does not mean yellow, does not mean bottle, and it does not mean castle. And he's like, oh, thank goodness, I'm so well prepared now. So he's next, he goes in. The same thing, he has a fantastic exam, and the teachers are like, oh, well done, you know. What's your last word? Your last word is teach. What does it mean in English? And he's like, not bottom, not yellow, and not castle. And they're like, excuse me, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, I, I told you what it is not. So you see the point. You don't give me the right answer. And it's the same thing that happens in our subconscious part. If I go to a competition, and I'm nervous, I learned the wrong way, like the wrong vocabulary, due to negative experiences. If I'm going to a concert and I'm nervous, if I'm going to a meeting, to a presentation and I'm afraid, it is due to experience. I learned it that way. So, I have to find a new connection. I don't want to be nervous. Yeah, that is working. Like, it's not a bottle, it's not a castle, it's not yellow. It doesn't work. The reason, please don't try to think of a grey elephant. No chance. Yeah, we have two important parts where we define our realistic goals. The first one is no comparison. I don't want to be faster than you say, bold, prettier than simple, or more intelligent than any of them. No chance. I cannot compare. Because the battle is only always be against myself. And the second part is no negations. 
I don't want to be nervous. Okay, how do I want to be? I want to be strong. I want to be calm. I want to be in control. Like Irvin says, control is security. So we have to learn it. The new way. Competition means pay off. Okay, I understood. If I'm going to a competition, I have an example now for you guys. And we always visualize with the, the ideal performance of this. So if I'm having my five goals, how I want to be. This is an actual European champion in karate, and he got ready to prepare the belt matches. So he got nervous, he got insecure, and the problem in martial arts, when you get tight, you can't be fast enough to get your points. So the first thing was like, oh, negative thought, because he would come like, oh my god, when you see the others, stop, hang on. But if you see this one, he will stop, hang on. So really, bring all of your ideas when you're focusing on comparing back to yourself. Stop. I'm looking forward to the chance because my subconscious is the little caveman, like you can say, it's really, really simple. I only have room for one honest emotion, only one. So I cannot be thrilled and excited in an absolutely dead broke morning. I, it's not possible. I can cover it so when I'm breathing and I'm really sad, I can pretend to be happy. Yeah, I can do that, but then this pretending, it's not honest. So if I program myself to be afraid for an event, for a competition, a concert, a meeting, then I will be afraid. If I program myself, Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to that because this is the chance. I can't lose. I can either win or learn so I can develop. Then my initial emotion will be positive. I'm ready. That means I trained, I practiced, I slept, I took good care of myself. I know I'm ready. I'm willing to give it 100%. If I don't do it now, when should I try it? I give it my all in here. And Special for him, subtle and fast, because as I said, if he ties up, no chance he's up. So if I feel like this poor guy who's holding the weight of the world, especially now for these last three years, for the people working in the background, working day and night to keep companies, to keep houses, to keep an orchestra together, and people don't see it, we risk our health. We can tension, nervousness, sleeping disorders, these are the simple things, but after a longer period of time, you will ruin your organs, you will get sick, physically sick. We can see that in your blood laboratories, we can see that in your ultrasound. This is the following part of the secondary element of psychological stress. Why? We have two systems. The one is the sympathetic nervous system, and the other one is the parasympathetic. So the sympathetic one is our caveman with the flight, a fight and flight with adrenaline, cortisol. Fantastic. If I'm really under pressure, <clears throat> then I can go and I can go much, much further than in the training point. If it really counts, then I can be equal. But in order to stay very healthy for a very long time, I need the antagonist. I have to sleep, I have to recover, I have to calm down. And the problem is that I have a chain reaction that is bringing this one much, much higher into a permanent stress level and stopping this one that is actually keeping me healthy. So, <clears throat> if we picture the caveman, our ancient friend, and he comes out in front of his cave and he faces a huge ancient grizzly bear. He's like, oh, awesome, that's a supermarket. Because the meat, that's flesh, and the, the skin, that's close, that's fantastic. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to kill it. Or he's like, ah, this thing is a bit angrier than I am. I'm alone, I better run. So every situation to survive was life threatening. It was always a life threatening event. And the situation he is that I have a situation that is life threatening, and automatically my hypothesis and my adrenaline focus of my kidney spread within 240 milliseconds cortisol, adrenaline, and non adrenaline like a firework. In every single cell of my body. So, so fast that I don't even realize it, changes my blood pressure, my heart rate, my pulse is coming out. 
my pupils enlarging because I have to see everything and I, my senses are completely aesthetic, even to the point that people start getting undressed because they can't feel the clothes on their skin anymore. The nerves are too sensitive. The muscles are much tighter. That's why, for example, singers have enormous difficulties to sing when they're nervous because they're too tight here in their throat. They can't relax their voice elements anymore. Or when you play with your ear, like you, know, you, you play a horn, you can't hold the ear stop anymore. You don't because you don't breathe right anymore. The digestive system changes. It stops when they're under pressure. Before and after, you might run. But in the very moment, it stops. And our skin changes to the point that my little cake make news. In a second, it's life threatening. We have to fight. We will be hot. So we sweat to cool you down. So then a politician, he is afraid of speaking in public. And I'm like, hey, how about your speech tomorrow? What happens? And he's like, oh, come on, Tina. Yeah, so this is, it's such a chain reaction. And this is the initial cause. This is biochemistry. This is medicine and natural science. The psychological part is the initial cause. This is a symptom. And we have to really go into a different direction as well. So if we go into neurological science, not the psychology, the medical part, the science, we have these brain cells, they are called axons. At the end of one, another one is attached to this little element. And if we enlarge it, it's our semantic gap. So information we're going through the gap back and forth, and this is where we learn, where we study, where we develop, where we increase. This happens right here. So, information comes in an electrical version, is transformed into chemical transmitters, and transformed back into a flash on the other side. So what happens when I have to go on stage and my little caveman says, you go up here, you're dead. It's like threatening. The brain decides which mode I do need and I do not need. So, even a child in school has to go to the board. Two plus four, I don't know it anymore because this, the brain is covering one side of the synaptic gap with its own chemical transmitters. We don't need anything of history, geography, German, English if I have to fight for my life. So everything is reduced to survival. When I sit back on my chair, I'm like, oh, Goodness, that was a close one. I said, hi. It's released again, and I have all my knowledge. So a typical blackout got nothing to do with intelligence. It got nothing to do with the child is too lazy in studying enough, or the musician, or the professional manager hasn't prepared well enough. A typical blackout is a biochemical reaction in the brain, and it's linked to fear. If I'm not afraid, I'm not having a blackout. Let's stay with the neurological part. This is an, um, an instrument to measure our heart, uh, uh, brain waves, the activity. It's called, it's measured in hearts. So I need the alpha waves, which is about 8 to 13 hearts. We have these waves twice a day by nature. In the morning when I wake up and my body is completely in the mattress, I haven't even opened my eyes, I'm completely asleep. But I'm already smelling coffee or I hear the birds. So my mind is awake, but my body is completely relaxed and shut down. Or in the evening, when I go to sleep, and I'm still here like a car driving past my house, but I don't, don't hear anyone. So I realize this, but I'm very completely down. This is the most important phase because this one can keep us healthy. The higher the expectations, the higher the power for us in the better ways, highly productive, in my laboratory, creating, training, using music, the more I have to relax and calm down so that I will keep this high performance level for a long period of time without getting sick. So, in this alpha phase, I can retrain my subconscious elements. So we are working with the tools to retrain our initial reaction, our initial emotions, if I think about something that I can reprogram it. The use stress and the distress, the one psychology doesn't really make a difference with it anymore because if I stay too long in either of them, I will get ill, of course. So if I have like a scientist working in his laboratory and he knows exactly, oh, one more element and I can get the Nobel Prize. 
Of course, he forgets about eating, drinking, about sleeping after five days. He will break down, of course, yes. But if I want to go to the Olympics, and I'm not willing to reach the level of pain, to leave my comfort zone, to give it my very best, if I'm not willing to fight for my 100% I can give, I need to go to the Olympics and stay at home. Okay, so I want this. Any artist, any musician, any athlete of any discipline, any performer, any manager wants to be there because this is a lead performance. This is fantastic. We feel good, we feel strong, we are creative, we are awake. As long as we can control the elements of, of recovery. Yeah, so you stress all the things. I need to switch back and forth. And the better I can train that, the more stable and healthy I am. Once I switch over the 38 parts in our brain waves, I'm like, I, this is too much now, I can't handle it anymore. Stay away, I, leave me all alone. So change in my personality, apathetic, I can't focus anymore, I can't sleep anymore, my digestive system is coming up, I'm a bit nervous. All of these things will happen because then I'm over the edge. Stress. To me, it's essential. I'm an athlete. If I don't have stress, if I don't care. So I need stress in a healthy way to hold, to give it my very best because I'm more sensitive and more focused. But you need to learn how to handle the fire. If you can't handle it, it will make you whole. So the development is always when we first have a bit of an imbalance. We work more than we can by next. Or I'm unable to process what's happening right now. Yeah, my personal, individual reaction to stress. I have a high intensity, which turns into permanent part. If I do not come out of this negative spiral, I will go one way into a burnout or a depression. And now we have, like Erin said in the beginning, the first initial cause of the pandemic or the war, that the suicide rate, six. Now we have India number three, we have the rates really coming up again. We have more aggression, we have more um, violence in the household, we have more suicidal numbers now in the long run. And this is the dangerous part. All of the people that we're holding together now, covering in a permanent stress level for years, they are in danger to risk their health. So this is the problem we have to, to be very careful. We have three elements which are already very old that we can learn to control and reprogram the way I think, the way I act, and the way I feel. And they all are linked to each other. Goals. We have great misunderstanding and measurable goals. So everything I can look at the internet, ranking, wages, times, points. Audience, even anything uh, I can look up in the internet is measurable. But these are goals I cannot influence directly. I can't change that because I have competitors, I have interests, I have yeah, opponents that back me. So everything in this part here is result and success oriented. I cannot influence directly. That means if I have these goals, I build up pressure immediately. Let's focus on behavioral and performance oriented goals. Because this is what I can influence. I can control the way I present myself. I can control my thoughts. I can learn to control the way I'm talking to myself. The way I think, feel, act, emotions, technique, tactics. This is all I can control myself. I just need to know how, but I can. So if I get my highest focus on this one and I show my best performance, I will reach my national goals. It doesn't work the other way, only this way. Stressor is the little devil that is creating the pressure. So if the gap between that what I want and that what I can is very narrow, very mild, I'm a bit challenged, but it's okay. I can handle that. If this is so far away, my little came in here is like, no, 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 you go up there, you're dead. And the whole circus starts. 
no chance to say calm when I subconsciously know, no seriously, I can't handle the situation, I'm not up for it. I'm the best friend. You want me to go to dance ballet? No chance. Yeah, so it's absolutely right that you're afraid and nervous because you are not perfect. The goal is too far away from your ability. So it's not the wrong goal, it's just the wrong timing. I need smaller goals in between to bring me to this point. The part with anticipation, the goals have to be in the very, very near future to be able to give me a positive element and a success story. So if I want to lose 40 kilos and I'm fighting and I have a nutrition plan, I have a personal trainer, I'm very disciplined. After one week, I lost one and a half kilos. Ugh, 30 days to go. Okay, I'm fighter. I'm gonna continue another week. And I'm working harder. I lose two kilos. Ugh, 36 to go. Yeah, I might as well give up right away. It's not working anyway. So I quit. Of course. So if I represent my goal, is that I want to lose one and a half kilos every single week. Now my goal is set for 40. I don't even know the 40 is anymore. It's okay, because if I do this one week and I just want to have kilos, I'm like, yay, go to tea. We're going to do that the next week. I'm going to be a bit more disciplined. I want to lose two kilos. I'm going to challenge myself. Yes! So you see what happens. Week after week after week after week, I'm going to my 40 kilos. But the whole path is lined up with success and achievement. And this is how we create realistic goals. Not the top one is wrong. It's the path to reach the top goal. So if I'm only thinking too far into the future, oh my god, we're going to win the tennis player, the next two matches, yes, we will be. No chance. I'm not here and now in this very moment with my BDP act and I can't show my performance. The same if I think, oh last time I made these stupid mistakes. Hopefully, oh god, this is the same situation. I don't want to be mistaken. Yeah, of course, then. I think about the mistakes that will happen. I'm not here and now with my big deal. So the goal has to be the short period of time with the very, very small measure of goal, then I can have the achievements. Self-talk. We all have situations like this. Like, oh, I should have tried harder. Oh, come on, you could have done better. Yeah, is that helpful? No, because it doesn't give you direction. So, I've never had a person who can talk to other people the way they're talking to themselves. And why? Because it's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. It's not even the part of calling names. Yeah, it's just stupid something. No, it's, it's the part of putting on pressure and not appreciating the effort you put in. This is cruel. But we do it to ourselves, so please, Respect yourself, be kind. You're working really, really hard. The past years have been extremely a challenge. So at least be kind to yourself so you stay healthy. We can reprogram self-talks. We have, of course, we have countless ones, but limiting it to two. Constructive and self-destroying ones. Now, the constructive ones are not, oh, I'm the best, I'm going to win anyway, I'm better than anyone else, no. It's, I'm well prepared, I give it my best try. I'm looking forward to the chance. I want to be strong and brave, even when I'm afraid. I want to fight. This is constructive because I have orders. I know how I want to be. The other thing is self-humiliating. If I tell myself I'm not going to make it, no one is going to like me, I will believe it. If I tell myself I'm like, okay, I don't care whether the people like me, but I will give it my best shot, I will believe that as well. So program yourself for be aware how powerful this is. Stubborn thought is a tool we use. So there are three elements in it. So I have my little caveman, caveman who said, oh my god. This is completely getting me out of my balance. It's sidetracking me. I can't handle the situation. I'm stressed. So I will go down the negative spiral. And I will think in a negative way and I will feel even worse. And then I will have a wrong body language. And then I see the reaction and then I think even in a worse way. So negative spiral goes on. So I need the stop. 
I consciously have to stop this, which a lot of people are going to use. Stop, don't think about it. Yeah, don't. Don't think about it. Yeah, don't think about it for other things. It's not going to work. So, I have to stop it, and immediately I have to add on a mental training program with visualization because I have to know how I want to think, feel, or perform. Now, this part there has to be tailored to your individual needs. It has to be tailored to your fears and wishes because every single person is different. And to give you all the mental training would be extremely unprofessional and not sustainable. It wouldn't work. Yeah? But this whole routine is working. Even in the worst pressure, this is Since everybody is so different and unique, we have concentrated the different mental practices into subjects because there are people that are challenged in number 11. I can't handle conflict. Okay, conflict management, communication is more in there. I have people that can't handle their control, they can't control their emotions. Okay, we're going more to this direction. Yeah, because mental training, psychology is so huge. If we all live in the same program, we would miss 80% of the individuality in the group. Yeah, so try to figure out what are your individual needs? What do you need? What do you want? This is all the is. The personal attitude to it. Of course, we have countless different characters. Make it simple again. We always have those who say, ah, oh, awesome, that's a challenge. We want to try it. And the ones who are like, oh, good, I'm going to watch you first. Please go ahead. Yeah, so this is by nature. Now, I'm having an example in here. I didn't translate all the pictures, but I will give you the story just as an example. We have a noise. If we sit in here and we hear a noise coming from the outside, like a big bang, it could be a broken exhaust of the car, or it could be cabin noise, it's just bah. So I have the negative one is like, oh, bloody hell, I'm aggressive, this is annoying. Okay. And I have the one on the other side who says, oh, hang on, I used to have a car like that. Ooh, that was fun times. And it's automatically linked into the past with a positive memory. So the second one here, the first one, he's like already poisoning and is completely toxic to his environment. Go, bloody, prepare your car. And he's talking to the others like he starts to feel uncomfortable because he's so aggressive. This one here is doing the same thing. He's like, ah, remember? And he starts telling stories, and the whole environment is, is included, and they're all laughing, everything is happy. So this one here is close to a breakdown and 10 years older, while this one here is 10 years younger. So the initial reaction is a source of the element of stress. The espresso can be a noise, simple as that, just a noise, with the personal reaction and the repetition. This is creating stress. Okay? I don't have time to recover, we always have that. I've got so much to do and I, I, I can't, you know, cook up with the overload. Yes, and especially in these times when you're running on the red limit, you have to take care of yourself. You have to do sports. You have to sleep. This is your responsibility. Because if you do not take care of yourself now, there's no alternative way. You will break down. Especially after now, again, we have three years of pandemic where people are working 24 7 since years. They use all the energy levels there, all the metrics. Now is the time to take good care of yourself. We have four types of energy, not only one. So when people come and they say, ah, oh, I'm so tired, I can sleep for weeks, and I'm exhausted, I'm completely dead. Hang on. Antennas, physical, mental focus and processing. So that is our in every single time. And I'm asking Nina, I said, Nina, come on, I know you're ex extremely exhausted, but I gotta go hike and I gotta go on the mountain. Would you join me? And Nina would be like, yeah, I'm exhausted, but this one day we're gonna do it. And well, it will be fantastic. Yeah? So, this one here, even when I'm exhausted, is quite high. The same, if I go to the and say, ah, I've got a client, 
here orchestra house management in the arts. I am here with you here. Could you please yeah, can I make you a break? Can you give me information about how this whole thing works? And you know I'm completely exhausted would be working and spot on and give you all of her information because this is her expertise. This is where she is all absolutely stuck. Yeah? So even when I'm exhausted, my mental focus for my expertise for what I can do is really hard. So my antennas internally, I'm starting to interpret, I'm starting to feel more, I'm weakening, I'm emotional, I'm starting to overthink things. This part is overflowing. And the more it does, the crazier I am. And on the other side, the strength to process and to cope with all of that, that's empty. This is, I'm dead on this side. And this is why this one is overflowing. It'll always more because I'm getting more emotional, more exhausted, less energy on the other side. This is one way direction. This is actually the part in the middle where I can pretend. To the outside, I'm always fine. I function like a robot. I'm strong in my physical part when people see it and I'm completely controlled. I can focus on my elements. And as soon as I go, this is my imbalance part. This is my weakness. And this one here, this overflowing and this level out there, this will make you ill. We have to bring it back to balance. That's a hierarchy of the last law. So when people come and they're like, I am exhausted, I'm dead, I'm close to burnout, I'm afraid, I have panic attacks, I don't know how to handle situations anymore. Yes. In mental training and in psychology, we have to cover all the puzzle pieces. So the most important element down here are the physiological needs. Drink, eat, sleep. This is the base. If you don't eat in a nutritional way, if you don't drink enough for days and weeks, if you don't sleep enough, we don't need to talk about mental strength. Every person will be emotional and trained. So let's cover the basics. So we have to go into nutrition, we have to go into time management, we have to go into structure, we have to go into organizational parts, and then we start figuring out where the initial cause is, how we can reprogram the subconscious element. So consequences, have we said digestive systems, allergies are coming up, sleeping disorders, yeah, that's normal, no it's not. I'm a bit irritated in my stomach, I always have that, no, this is a symptom. And this is the part, obesity, as you would say. Now, obesity, some people gain weight under pressure, others lose weight under pressure. Not normal, unhealthy. But all of this is on the outside, and I have to try to figure out what the real initial causes. And usually, what it comes down to when you really start digging really, very deeply, it's a fear. Not the huge panic attack, it's the fear of disappointing people, of not performing, not being good enough, of losing a position, the fear of failure, that is the initial cause. And as long as you're working on the symptoms, it's not sustainable, it's not going to change anything, it's like a boomerang coming back, hitting you always in the back of your head again. This is not professional. So we have to start to dig really, really deep into the reason for it all. And here again, every person has a different reason, every person has a different I can give you long lists now. Longer. And even more. Yeah, we're all very smart. But we need tools. And the part is, as I've said, when I lose 40 kilos, that's the what. I don't know how. So tools have to be simple and strong. They have to be sustainable. I have to be able to integrate them into my daily routine right now. A mental training tool can't be difficult or huge or needs a lot of time. No, because then we won't do it. Yeah? So I will give you a few examples because I want to give you an idea of how the general tools are working. Bear in mind, these are the general ones, not your individual ones. Okay? We have to always make this very clear. Organizing success. I will be at the end of this. Great. How? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, cool. Okay. But I want to be a little bit. Okay. No. You make a goal. 
think big. We have minimum, maximum, and then we have stretch goals. Yes, please work with the stretch goals because if you only prepare your minimum goal and you fail, come on, you guys. So if I prepare my stretch goal, which is just out of reach for me, but I prepare, I've been really, really hard for that, but I fail, I will definitely reach my maximum goal. How? Is the structure, is the organization, are the tools, the training, maybe I have a different person plan, maybe I need a personal trainer. I don't know. The how is the implementation, the how is way more important to me. So if the person comes to me and wants to be a big at the Olympics, fine. Understood? Yeah, not going to talk about this anymore. Now we're talking about what we need to do on a daily basis to ready to reach your goal. Another two, space of acceptance. That's a very, very strong. Um, if I'm not willing to accept things that I cannot change and cannot control, I will break down in the long run. So, simple things, tennis player. I'm willing to accept that it's windy, right? Say it's wrong for everyone, or, oh, wind, I can't work like that. Oh, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so bad. Yeah, no, you're wasting energy, you can't focus. Thinking that it's not here and now, accept it, move on. But we have this in big things. For example, hypothetically, I'm going to accept that my husband is going to die to cancer in four weeks. Can I change it? No. For your judgment, because that is, I'm sorry, but this is there's nothing nice I can say about it. But if I get up every morning and I'm in grief and I'm frustrated and it's the fault of the doctors because they gave the wrong medication and the world is unfair, why him, why me? Then all my days are filled with negativity and anger. I will lose eventually. If I stand up and I say, okay, I'm going to accept it, that's hard. But now, Daddy, come on, let's enjoy this day as long as we can. So, even under the most dramatic circumstances, I can create consciously positivity, strength, and joy. Another caliber, I'm going to accept that my husband is cheating on me. Free of volume, oh, don't like it. <laughs> Can I change it? No chance. Can I control it? No. So, as long as I tell him how ignorant and what he thinks and stuff like that, he probably tells me, well, it's your fault anyway, yes. As long as we are doing this one, I'm not accepting it, we are stuck in a cage, and I will continue to we both break down. So, okay, I'm going to accept that this happened. I have a choice. Either I say, Okay, I mean, no harm feelings, let's move on. I sort of understand where it's coming from, we gotta try to work again. Or it was out, I can't handle it. Either situation will be hard, will be very painful, will take a lot of energy and work, but I have a goal, I can move on. So, with all these tools, the most important thing is I have to be able to come from problem oriented thinking to goal and solution oriented thinking, and I have to come from an emotional reaction into an analytic reaction. Then I have control and I can develop the move on. Otherwise, I stuck. The same with this tool here, short analysis. Easy version, text. Yeah? Sir, next. What was wrong? We all in the audience absolutely see next. I'm a pro. Yeah? Okay. So then we get problem oriented, and my tennis player is like, oh, I'm so stupid, and damn it. Always make the same mistake. I told you it's gonna happen again. Of course. But if I control my emotions, if I control my thoughts, and I say, okay, what was wrong next? Why? Oh, I have to analyze. Hang on. Then I'm going through my routine. Balance, okay, weight on my left foot. Three times triple hands together, weight on my left foot. Oh, I threw my ball too far to the front, so I have to push it down. How can I do better? Now I know the solution. Throw the ball straight, jump, and use your head into the field. As soon as I know the reason for my mistake, I can have a solution and work and idealize it. Not the other way around. What was wrong? We always get stuck here. What was wrong? Yeah, I played the wrong note. Yeah, what was wrong? Wrong performance. I was offensive. Okay, so we learn now. We can learn or win. This is the hard part. I said think the act. Discipline is think. How can we achieve all of this? How goals? Discipline is the way to think. If at five o'clock in the morning my character says, 
you got to get up and run. I'm going to do it because it's appointment, it's structured. And then I wake up and I look outside and it's raining and like two degrees. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. My discipline is, come on, get up. The way I think, the way I trained it, that's discipline. Okay? Patience is an emotion. Not, yay, if I have to wait. And, oh my God, yeah, I'm so incompetent now. Patience is to control your aggression and frustration while you're struggling. The best example of the past three years, we have to be patient, we have to be positive, we have to stand up, we have to keep the motivation, we have to keep going, we have to keep control of our negative thoughts. We just control them so we are patient. We're not like, yay, another concert cancelled and all the organization was for nothing. We control it. That is patience. Patience is to control your emotion, to stay positive, although we have a challenge. Performance is professionalism. Everything I see from the outside, performing, acting, the way I carry myself, what I, what I, the clothes I wear, that's performance, and that is the professionalism. That I'm structured, on time, and late, polite, I can listen, I can handle stress. That is what people see from the outside. Now, decision, responsibility, consequences, these are the most favorite words in my work because no excuses. No excuses, it's someone's fault. If I'm late, it's my fault. So everything I do throughout the whole day, at what time I get up, how I dress, what I eat, how much I eat, whether I eat, whether I'm polite, whether I'm awake, whether I'm focused or arrogant, everything I do throughout the whole day is a choice. This is your own choice, so you make a decision. So it's your responsibility, no? And at the end of the day, no matter how many people you have to support you, at the end of the day, you're the only person that has to live with the consequences, good or bad. So if I turn this around and I say, okay, I'm not willing to live with these consequences at the end of the day, it is my responsibility to make the touch pieces. So there's no room for excuses. And this is also the part, even a choice to ask for help, even a choice to reach out, a choice to learn to say no without offending people. This is your choice and I beg you, please, take good care of yourself, watch your health, watch your energy level, watch your long-term development. Yeah? As you've been said, we always think about the next two days, can we go, how about the next five years, ten years? I want you to be strong enough.